Well folks, it's time for the final character video of the Samurai 7 Retrospective, and this one will be on Rikichi. Now, it can honestly be debated on whether or not Rikichi is important enough to warrant a video. Um, can be argued not, he's really more of a supporting character. Though unlike Yara, his sort of sidelining is much more quick, and it does feel a lot more natural. I did decide to do a video on him though, a short one, because he is in the movie, so I'd need a sort of baseline to compare to when I do the movie comparison video, and because Rikichi offers a unique perspective that no one else really does, that of a relatively powerless individual getting by. Now Rikichi is introduced in episode 1, as the guy the village elder assigns to get the samurai from town. As such, he accompanies Kiara to the town and you know, generally assists in recruiting samurai, though doesn't honestly do too much. His real development comes in the caves, though, where, after kind of hitting on some random woman, he reveals that the bandits took his wife, and that he wants her back after having lived in denial and trying to move on for so long. He is, however, paralyzed by his lack of power in the situation, and this probably explains why he tried to move on so desperately. In fact, he's frustrated with it so much that he takes Gorobe's sword and even attempts to charge a bandit mech, although the suicide charge is stopped, and Kanbei does promise to help get his wife back after the defense of Kana Village. In said defense, Rikichi does take a part and, between battles, even tries briefly learning the ways of the blade. Once the next battle begins though, Rikichi goes back to the bow and even tries to shoot a mech with its own giant mech gun, although the recoil from this action essentially turns his ribs into dust. This great injury further sidelines Rikichi and sees him unable to accompany either Kanbei or those going after him to rescue his wife, although he does meet up with the group and his newly freed wife Sane at the Firefly Inn. And it is here where Rikichi's humanity is truly exposed, as he has to work through not only talking his wife through her massive trauma, but also her possible Stockholm Syndrome. This of course is incredibly distressing for him, though he does eventually help Sane transition to a healthier mental state and into the woman that she was before. Finally, Rikichi is still too injured to really fight in the final battle with the capital, although he does take the woman home and is later shown to have settled back in the farming with a now seemingly recovered and loving Sane. All of this is to say that, while Rikichi is a supporting character who is put in the background relatively early on, the writers do a good job in establishing this A. early, and B. still managing to give him an impact even in his limited supporting role. And that impact is that he conveys the perspective of someone who is powerless in a world ruled over by those of great power. In fact, Rikichi being a background character kind of even enhances this impact as it shows his lack of power, and that regardless of power, we are all still humans and can get by. Above all, I dedicated this video because I wanted to talk on how Rikichi is a look on how those abused by the powerful navigate and develop in response to it. Because of his peasant background and perspective, Rikichi is one of the, if not the most realistic of all, of all the characters in the show. This realism is Rikichi's greatest gift to the series. The fact that he is in the background, the fact that he can't really do too much, shows that there is a sort of grounded element to the series, and that that it's aware of itself and its themes, showing how the nature of conflict can be truly ruinous to everyone, especially those who don't necessarily have the power to fight, or the biggest power to fight. This lack of power, in turn, allows Rikichi to be a great exploration of humanity, as we can see how someone, realistically, would deal with all the issues that come up to him. If we were characters in that universe, we would probably be in Rikichi's shoes, not necessarily any of the samurai, and it's as realistic experiences and character growth and kind of arc which allow us to see the true humanity present within the series. Again, all of Rikichi's moments and expressions are incredibly realistic. On one hand, he's just some guy trying to get by, and he's doing his best to do so. He knows that getting down on himself and the world won't necessarily help him. He knows that he needs to be strong in order to carry on. However, as a realistic human, he also has emotions, and that the grinding experiences of the world around him are getting to him, and we see him suffer moments of emotional distress from time to time. Again, very realistic moments. He's not They're not over the top, but instead very human, as we see a man portraying very raw humanity. Again, while he does have some level of stoicism, it's also present that he's under a great deal of distress. Moments like this don't show that he's weak. They show that he's been through a lot, and they show the human core of the series. Therefore, Rikichi's continued background presence allows for continuous moments of humanity at its most pure and raw expressions. He isn't a fighter, he isn't the brightest, he's just a man who wants to live a quiet life and farm his rice. He has his pride and feelings, but is relatively well balanced and exceedingly average. He is an everyman who realistically can't really do too much against the oppressive systems in place on his own and is thus beaten down by them. He knows he can't really change the system though and resolves to simply bear the weight and go on living, 
trying to keep moving forward as best he can in spite of the setbacks that he has suffered. He does this in order to not only ignore his pain, but to try and make genuine progress in combating it eventually. Keeping his head down forever isn't sustainable, of course, though, and he is eventually frustrated and crushed by his lack of power, even seeking to improve his status through attempting to learn the way of the blade. Although the system present is so powerful that realistically he couldn't really do too much about it alone, whether or not he actually learns how a sword works. He's a brutally realistic portrait of, hey, life is unfair, you're gonna get screwed. And the realistic grievances of his character, of course, extend into his realistic reactions of them. At first, he knows his place in the system and that it's a very poor place that he can't really do too much about. He thus tries to keep his head down and not acknowledge how everything is going. And he tries to move on, even though this may not be the best thing moving on so quickly. We can see this in that he doesn't mention his wife till they get to the caves after sort of hitting on this other woman in a sad attempt to try and move on. Another realistic response that we see later is his attempt to fight back after being pushed past the breaking point, getting himself hurt in the process, fighting out of his league. Eventually, while resting, he starts to reflect, and eventually even stumbles his way through helping his wife recover from her own trauma. And while admittedly he doesn't do the best job helping Sané, he does make an attempt, and the portrayal of his attempt is one of the most touching and realistic I have seen in any media when it comes to someone helping someone else recover from trauma. He knows that she's been through a lot, but he also knows he literally can't feel her feelings, so there's a sort of disconnect. He has no real idea on what to do. He wants her to be okay, but can't really make her okay. You can't simply just make someone better instantly. He still wants to try though, so he tells her everything will be okay in a meek attempt to try and hold everything together. But it's not super effective, and we soon see him fall into distress as the pain of watching his wife suffer stares him in the eyes, and he weeps for he knows he simply cannot make that pain go away, even though he's trying his best. His best efforts aren't eliciting much of a big response. He shows the pain of someone watching their loved ones in pain, and this makes the scenes he shares with Sané in the, at the inn some of the most heartbreaking in the entire series. She's hurting, and he wants to help, but realistically he can't help at the moment, and so too experiences great pain. This is the pinnacle of Rikichi's presence in both the series and the series' realism, and it's a realism of seeing a man suffering because those around him are suffering, and because the world is just coming down so hard on all of them right now. This is a scene of humanity. However, in keeping with reality, the worst possible outcome is not always guaranteed. There are times of improvement and joy. People can get through a surprising amount of things and continue moving forward. And fortunately for everyone, Rikichi's continued presence and growing understanding of Sané and Sané's supportive environment seem to help her recover, and she does eventually seem to make a full recovery. And the portrayal of this is also realistic. There is no anime speech moment where someone simply says, Sané, you're gonna make it, and then she feels better. There is no anime speech moment where Sané herself declares that she will be better all of a sudden. There is no simple, easy fix and no simple click where everything is better. No, instead there is a very realistic portrayal of a slow and gradual improvement. I mean, it makes sense. Her condition is not a good one. And it's kind of a miracle she's as good as she is when she's first recovered. She's been through a lot. And as such, there's no realistic way to portray a fast recovery. No. Instead, there is a slow and gradual improvement with her condition. She goes from denial, to silence, to muted engagement, to normal talking, to even smiling in her final scene. A final scene which, uh, note you, probably takes at least several months, if not at least half a year, after her introduction back to Rikichi. This is a realistic portrayal of someone taking time that they need in order to get through a, very, a series of very traumatic events. And I appreciate the realism of the series. And it's kind of the strength of both Sané and Rikichi. All of this is capped off in the final scene where Sané smiles at Rikichi and takes his place in the fields. It's showing that the two now seem to have gone through the worst and are making genuine progress towards harvesting a better life. And again, while a good deal of this arc is kind of in the background, this kind of enhances it as it shows that there's always some humanity in the background regardless of the situation. It is a well-written exploration of the human condition condensed in the two supporting characters. Rikichi and Sané are very realistic characters, showing us that yes, life will suck sometimes, we will all have our struggles, but even if not glamorous or fast, we can still get through them into a better tomorrow.